I'm Matt Cerrone from Metsblog.com and SNY.TV, and we're here at a very loud and under construction uh, Long Island City, waiting outside uh, John Neese's apartment building to uh, hitch a ride to the ballpark. Ari Dickey. I mean, he's been, it's been incredible. Have you ever seen anything like what he's, what he's been doing here? I've June? never been a part of, of a team with a guy like, like him, what, what he's doing what he's doing. Do the other pitchers on the team, I mean, obviously you don't all throw knuckleballs, so like, can you learn something from him just based on his preparation? And is there anything you can take away from what this, what he's doing here? It's really hard, I, you know, because what he does, he just makes it look so easy. Yeah. And it's really not, I mean, oh. pitch, you, you just can't, I mean, it's not as easy as, as going, you know, pitching nine, nine innings of shutout baseball. It's, it's not that easy. You chart pitches for Johan Santana, right? Did mm -hmm. I read that right? So yeah. when he was throwing his no-hitter, at what point, you know, in that game were you starting, obviously you're following very closely, so at what point are you starting to think, wow, this yeah. is pretty wild? I charted all but the ninth inning. So I charted eight nice. innings in, in the down. clubhouse. And then, yeah, I mean, it was pretty <laughs> special. Sure. Then I put, then I, you know, put the chart down and I was like, and then I came out to the, the dugout and kind of was trying to get a feel of what, what the situation was. You know, it, you know, was Terry, you know, let him go back out and Johan was not coming out. No. He, he wasn't going to let Terry take him out. So, no. but it, it was, it was awesome. It was one of the greatest moments um, in baseball. Definitely in my, for, in my career. And definitely for, sure. for Mets fans, I can tell you yeah, that much. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so you guys, when you head off to a road trip, I had a lot of people ask me this question. Um, you know, what, how do you handle, you know, packing and luggage and who's paying your bills while you're away? I mean, the life of a big league player, like what's going on at home? Well, that's why I have a beautiful fiance. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> and she, she takes care of me. I mean, she's the best as far as taking care of me. Um, she pays, you know, she pays the bills. Um, and you know, it's kind of one of those things where those are those are headaches that I like to not have, you know, during the season. Sure. And she does a great job. Of I'd like to not have them. them. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. What team did you grow up rooting for? I grew up rooting for the Indians. I was okay. a big Indians fan as a kid. And, um, my dad took me to a few games, and you know, I always had that dream of, of being out there. Um, someday. So at what point do you kind of stop being a fan and you start to realize it's your job and you're not necessarily, you know, following the Indians, for instance? Um, as soon as I got drafted, yeah. really. I mean, Just like a switch. Right, yeah, it's like huh. a switch, you know. Uh, you get drafted, now um, <laughs> the, the organization that's paying my bills is, is the New York Mets, so that's the, that's the organization that I fight for. Um, you mentioned paying the bills and you signed a, a nice contract. You know, how does that change your life? Does it have any kind of does it less pressure? Do you feel pressure to pitch better? I mean, how does that work? No, no. The good thing about being from Ohio in the Midwest is that you know, I grew up with values that kind of keep me grounded. Not, you know, kind of like you hit the lottery and then all of a sudden you just go out and spend all your money and turn into this, you know, different person. You know, I just really, you know, told myself I'm just not going to change. I'm always going to be, you know, the same guy. Um, you know, just the same guy with just a little bit more money. So we wanted to do a little, like, rapid fire, just ask a question, quick answer, and okay. pedal through some of these. say this is a quick trip today. There's I know. We zero zoomed traffic. along. We got all these questions. Zero traffic. And Everybody's driving like human beings. <laughs> not on that great. side, though. <laughs> um, so best dresser on, on this year's team. Best dresser on this year's team would have to be um, David. Does a good job. He keeps it clean, and so does Andres Torres. If you had to have a, a roommate on the road, who would it be? A roommate on the road. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> so there's limited rooms. You gotta oh, pick somebody on teams. Boy. Your buddy, like who you? I would have to say probably Ra. There you go. Is he the he, smartest guy in the team? Smartest, most interesting. It'd, it'd probably be either him or, or Burdak. They're just, yeah. I mean, they're 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 funny. They're 
they're just outgoing. I would ask funniest, but it, I'm assuming it, that's Burdak. It wouldn't be boring, that's for sure. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Who's the hitter on, the, on your team that you would uh, least like to face? I'm not going to say David because <laughs> I always, I always, I, we always have that kind of competitive argument about what he would do if he faced me, what I'd do if I faced him. I'd have to say the way uh, Scott Harrison swinging the bat, I'd, huh. it, it's incredible what he's doing against it lefties is. this year. I mean, sure. I, I'd, I'd be afraid to throw a breaking ball to him because he'd, he'd crush it and the fastball. He crushes the fastball. I mean, it's it's incredible what he's doing. How does Justin Turner's you know post game pie technique compare to uh, Willie Harris, who was the star last year? Yeah, he was. Willie was good. Um, they're real sneaky. Yeah. I mean, it's it's great. And then uh, just kind of like RA's, you know, one hitter the other day, he's like, Justin was like, this is a pie, mo this is a pie moment, and he went and got the pie. So he announces that in yeah. the clubhouse. Oh yeah, he's like, time for the pie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. When did he make the choice or make the switch from shaving cream to whipped cream? Or is he use whipped cream all year? Because the guys seem to always say, well, Johan said I would it, knock him out if you use shaving yeah. cream. That's nasty. But they've but all made an effort the to point it out. Like, yeah, the, you got to use whipped cream because the shaving cream, you don't want to taste that's it. That's terrible, yeah, sure. You know. Here we are. Wow, that was a quick trip. It was. That was a quick trip. Quick, painless. Murphy Turfy. Here we are. All right. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks. Thanks, man. Yep.